My heart started was there. pumping faster there. than ever before. He was right. What's up, everybody? My name is Johnny, and welcome back to some reaction videos, okay? We're gonna react to some scary stuff, but today I thought maybe we could try something different. We're gonna try some animated series. This is called a Scary Vacation Story 3. Got my snacks? Sour Patch Kid. Listen, exploders, get them, because they're During phenomenal. During holiday, I spent about three weeks in Japan. Uh-huh. I arrived pretty late, so I had to check into the hotel that I initially booked. Oh. So I booked the cheapest so hotel that I could find nearby. Aesthetically, it was quite nice, but it did- Pause next, listen. You like Gushers, mm. and you like Sour Patch Kids, mm. combine the two. I did have easy but access these are. to the building. Great. Meaning anyone could come in and go to any room as they please. Plus, there was no security in sight. After arriving in my room, I ordered some food and watched some TV. I was still pretty should. jet lagged from the flight, so I started to get ready for bed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As I was falling asleep, I felt the urge to double check the door just to see if it was locked. I didn't think anything was going to happen, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. About five minutes after I checked the door, I heard footsteps outside. Initially, I thought it was someone leaving their room, but the footsteps started to pick up speed. Right, right, right. The sounds started getting louder and louder, and I started to freak out a little. All of a sudden, the sound stopped. I looked at the light shining through the bottom of my door. Oh, God. There was a shadow. Listen, I'm staying in my room. I ain't getting up. At first, I thought it was room service, but it was too late for that. Or maybe it was some drunk idiot who was at the wrong room. As soon as I switched my light on, the shadow disappeared. I was confused, but I reluctantly what? went back to bed. That's when I suddenly heard scratching coming from my door. So I immediately turned my light on and shouted, Who's there? Light? A little After hole. a moment of silence, I heard the footsteps you know? slowly fade away. At this point, I was thinking it could be some kids messing around, so I got up, opened the door, and peeked my head outside. There's nobody there. I glanced in both directions down the dark and slim hallways. That's when my heart stopped. What's that? A man emerged from the darkness and ran erratically towards me. His face was contorted as he screamed, and I could see he was holding a knife in his what? right hand. As he got Close closer, it. I could see him more clearly. He had Close disgusting, it. long, dirty hair. His clothes were ripped, and he had cuts and bruises all over. What? I quickly slammed my door Wait, and pressed it. against it, praying that the man would just Locked go it. away. After what felt like hours, I finally gathered my courage and looked what? through the peephole. He was gone. Uh -huh. I let out a sigh of relief and checked the peephole again. My heart started pumping faster than ever before. He was right in front of the door. He was wearing a maniacal smile on his face, and all of a sudden he raised his knife and yelled, I'm gonna f***ing kill you! I jumped back and kept my eyes locked on the bottom of the door as no I way. backed up to my bed. I grabbed my phone and started dialing the police. As I raised the phone to my ear, I saw that the shadow was gone. When the police arrived, I tried to explain what happened, and they checked the security cameras. They almost immediately recognized the man. He had been doing this to people for a while now, and the police had been trying to track him down for months. After a long night of no sleep, I finally arrived at the right hotel that I had booked initially in Tokyo. Right. That creepy guy was if he's still there, on my, oh mind, my God. but I thought the chances of him being here were pretty slim, so I didn't bother locking my door that night. Right, right. At 12.05 a.m., I woke up to a big bang next to me. I turned around to see the same guy passed out on the floor with a knife in hand. I what? was in shock. How did he find me? I quickly ran out of the what? room and locked him inside. The cops came and he was finally arrested. Let's just say I'm always going to be locking my doors from now on. What? I got so many questions and no answers. Why is... First of all, why did the dude come in here and he pass out? First question. Who was he? Why was he doing that? I don't, I don't have, to have so many questions. This is called the Motel Animated. These are... These things right here are fire. I was 19 years old at the time, working at a sketchy motel. 
The motel was pretty run down, and the majority of people who stayed there were locals that were just doing things they weren't supposed to be doing. Let's just say the cops came by multiple times a week. Uh -huh. I worked as both a front desk person, checking in these creeps all hours of the night, and as a housekeeper who got to clean up their nasty, vomit-smelling rooms afterwards. Ugh. One afternoon, I was working as a housekeeper in the second building of the motel on the backside furthest from the office. I hated working over there because it not only had the most worn-down rooms, but it was always pretty vacant over there and way too quiet for comfort. I began cleaning one of my last rooms and wanted to get done in a hurry because it was getting late. Right. I was washing the mirror in the room that I was cleaning when all of a sudden, I saw a man in the reflection staring at me. He was mid-fifties, dirty, with long, greasy hair. Startled, I screamed, oh my god. I told him he scared me. The room I was currently cleaning was vacant, so there was no reason why this man should have been in there watching me clean. However, we just had a meeting on customer satisfaction, and my boss was really pressuring us to be more polite and help the guests any way we could. Uh, sir? I asked him cautiously. Uh, can I get you anything? Towels? Yeah, definitely. The man just stared back at me with a crooked grin and held out his hands to me. I thought maybe he what was handing it? me a tip for cleaning his room earlier, but when I looked down, I saw he was holding a hundred dollar bill. Alarm started going off in my head. No one tips a hundred dollars on a forty dollar a night room. Up. The man just smiled oh and said his name God. was Terry. He said he was staying in the room next door with his wife Sherry and sort of joked no, about their aren't. names rhyming. He smelled like car oil and alcohol. Nope. When I asked Definitely him why he was homeless. trying to hand me a hundred dollars, he laughed deep in his throat and said, Me and my wife were watching you, and we just wanted to have fun with you. I felt like my heart jumped into Get my throat. Get your Resident Evil having um, ass out no, of here! No, I, I can't do that, sir. I'm sorry. I wanted to run out of the room screaming, but he was blocking the door, my only exit. Raise eyes. The man ah. smiled again, taking on a softer tone of ah. voice, and invited me to come Spreading into his, his room eyeballs. to meet his wife, just to talk as friends. Absolutely I not, told dude. Him no again, and that I had a lot of work to do for the day. I prayed to God he would just go away, and eventually he did. He grunted and walked off in what I assumed to be the direction of his room. Ugh, definitely I weird. Racing. There is no wife. I thought this man could try and kidnap me. I was or, 110 pounds or, at the time, uh, not very graper. strong. He could easily overpower me. I locked the room from the inside and went directly to the phone to call my manager at the front desk, but the phone wasn't working. Oh boy. Adrenaline began pumping through my veins, and despite what I was always told not to do, I was panicking. Did he cut the line? No, I thought. This is this is a crappy motel, it happens all the time. But I just have to get out. But yeah, it was leave. I remembered that I had my cell phone out on my housekeeping card, but that was outside he, he the locked door. He took it, didn't he? I'd have to open the door to get it. Listen. I cautiously opened the door to the room I'm that I was going at him, dude. Out. I didn't see anyone, so I frantically began searching my cart for my cell phone. Or, 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 here's something. I was wasting too much run. time looking for it, so I just decided to run as fast as I could and make a break for the front desk in the office. Then from behind me, I heard the man again, but this time he was screaming to someone else, she's running, she's getting away. What? I could hear his shoes slamming against the pavement after me. I quickly turned the corner, grabbed my keycard, and let myself into a stock room and locked the door. Within moments, I heard the sound of the dirty guy and someone else running outside, searching for me. I stayed in that stock room for 30 minutes, shaking, until I could no longer hear him searching for me. I finally got the courage to run the rest of the way to the front desk. When I made it there, I collapsed into my boss's arms and he called the police. What? The man and whoever else was in the room with him peeled out before the cops could arrive, and I was beyond shaken up. I would have just quit. According to the police 100%. who ran a search, this wasn't the first time he had done something like this, and he was actually wanted for sexual assault, gross 100%. sexual imposition, and in yep. the past was once charged with rape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few weeks later, on what happened to be my birthday, this guy was mm -hmm. caught. A few weeks after that, I quit. I will never again work at another motel. Yeah, that's why I work for myself, you know? That's why I work for myself. What's this one? Scary field trip. Uh, field trip. Hello? It's not working. Field trip. Horror stories. Probably the last, probably the last one. All right. Back in high school, I took a mysteries and mythology type class or something uh -huh. like that. I don't remember the name of the class. 
It basically mm. just had to do with real life mysteries and creepy shit. I was into for that sure. kind of stuff. I was taking the class with a good friend, who I'll call Ben for this story. The teacher of the class took us on a field trip to a nearby abandoned village with an unknown past. Right. The village was built in the early 1900s, but seems as though it had been quickly abandoned shortly after it was built. The bus ride there was about 20 minutes. All of us were glued to the bus windows as we pulled up some sketchy looking, decrepit road cutting through dense forest. Oh god. The road eventually led to a clearing. We were there. For sure. We stepped out onto the road which had grass growing through the cracks. Uh-huh. The grass surrounding was almost knee high. Then there were the buildings. The tall, archaic brick buildings with the boarded up windows all gave off such chilling vibes. For sure. The teacher lined all 20 of us up, counted heads, and then began leading the way. The point of this little field trip was to use the so-called skills we learned in class to see if we could put anything together about why the village may have been abandoned so long ago. Some of the buildings had holes in the walls to serve as entryways. There were even holes in the ground next to some of the buildings, seemingly dug to get into the basements of some of the buildings, which seemed what? creepy. There was one building though, it stood taller than any of the others. It just intrigued me the most. Looks like a freaking While the teacher was leaving the group Minecraft. towards the village church, Ben and I decided to sneak off on our own to look for anything interesting. When we walked off in the direction of the tallest building, we saw a hole in the grounds. It was dug by the back door of the building, which had been sealed off. In the hole was a ladder, which led down to the concrete floor below. I'm we not going both down looked there. at each other and knew we had to do it. Of course not! Ben climbed down first, then You don't me. have to do that! Luckily, this was just around the time Apple started putting flashlights on their phones, so we had For a sure. source of light. It was creepy down there. There oh, were a couple gosh. of beer bottles, one graffiti tag on the wall, and dusty wooden nothing. planks everywhere. There Heck was a yeah, wooden dude. stairway which led Can't up to wait complete to die. darkness, since all windows and doors had been sealed shut from above. I'm not we going in there, dude. We had already as far as to enter the building. Absolutely so not. we figured we'd go up the stairs, too. I went first, and with each step, the creakiness of the hundred-year-old wood made me feel as if I was going to fall through each and every step. Ben followed suit. This floor of the building was very tight. It seemed like there were many openings going off into different, smaller rooms. It was so dark in there, you would never even guess it was daytime. <sighs> ben and I were honestly starting to get creeped out in there, and agreed to go back outside. But just then, there was a noise in one of the tiny rooms. I'm, I'm like so out of there. a big rock hitting the concrete floor. A nope. normal instinct nope. would be to run, nope. but Ben and I froze, locked eyes for a moment, then both tiptoed over to the opening of the room. Are you re are you we stupid? The into the room, and ran. We ran back down the stairs and then up the rusty ladder back outside. We caught up to the group out of breath. We didn't say anything though to avoid getting in trouble. One of our classmates asked us what was wrong. We told him we snuck into one of the buildings, and in one of the rooms, when we shined the light into it, we saw three guys standing maybe ten feet away from the doorway, facing Ben and I in a weird formation, what? as if they were waiting for us. Absolutely not, as dude. As we continued following the group, we paid extra attention to the tall building we entered from the distance, and before leaving, we saw a person's face at one of the higher level windows that had not been boarded up. We never told the teacher in fear of getting in trouble. We didn't know what to think. Were those just homeless people living in there? Were they gang members in hiding? Ben freaks me out with his theory. He says the they theory. were ghosts of the people who once lived in the town. Still, oh. the way the three guys were just hauntingly standing there so calmly staring at us the moment we peeked our heads Listen. through that doorway. Okay. I still that dude, can't look get at that, that dude's nose. Was it a knife? Out of my head. I may go back to that <laughs> village one day. I'm just not. to prove Ben's idea wrong. 
No! You are crazy. If I walk into someone's house, right, and I have a flashlight, and I peek into a room and there's three dudes just chilling there, right, just looking at you, right, I'm out of there. I'm going right back. I'm going back home. I'm, I'm watching a little bit of Scooby-Doo or something. I'm going to eat some snacks. I'm good. I'm not going back. Period. End of story. All right, everybody, this is a three animated horror sh uh, films. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you guys do the YouTube thing. Like, comment, subscribe to the show. As your friends, always, guys, my name is Johnny, and I'll see you guys in the next video.